Hi everybody and welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast. We are back with another match preview in the absence of Scott. So you've got me, Chris, your host this evening, joined by Ian and Daryl. So let's just go around each other. Ian, how are you doing, Ian? Uh, I'm good. A bit full. I've just scrammed uh, four roadway uh, rustlers. The, you know the Frankfurt uh, hot dog things that you get. Part of plastic ones. Just scrammed four of them because I was really hungry. So, but other oh. than that, I'm really good. All right. All right. A nice healthy diet for you. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I've just let myself go completely. Really, haven't I? So, <laughs> Daryl, what you had for tea? Uh, chicken and rice. All oh, right. Okay. Well, was, it. <laughs> was it nice? It's all right, aye. I? I don't think I don't think Russ that do chicken and rice, Ian. So no. take that one off your menu. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so boys, it is Wolverhampton this week. Um, a team that we're like drawn against a lot. So, but as always, before we get going, just want to say the Gallagher Shots match preview is brought to you by Mag Pin, the go to site for your non official pin badges. They do everything. Daryl, I think you've got a few of them. They do postcards, they do pin badges, right. they do stickers, a bit of everything. So check them out. Their website is magpinbadges.bigcartel.com. Boys, let's get down to business. Daryl, I'm going to come to you first of all, mate. Newcastle United need a result. It's been three defeats on the bounce, two of those in the Premier League, albeit against some tough teams. Now's our chance to get three points on the board, in my opinion. What's your thoughts, Daryl? I agree, Chris. Um, and certainly when you say we need a result, we need a result that isn't a draw or a loss. We definitely need to get out and get that win on, on Sunday afternoon. Um, you know, it's been a case of deja vu the last few weeks where we've been playing reasonably well. You know, we haven't been turning in stink as a performances and that. And uh, we've just been very unfortunate in front of goal. You know, we haven't been taking those chances and... There's been a lot of talk this week about Callum Wilson um, and about whether or not he should have a, a game on the bench and we should start Isaac. Um, it's a big talking point this week. Um, and, you know, it, maybe that is going to have to be the case. Um, I've just seen some comments from him this afternoon. I think he must have been on his podcast this week talking about it. Um, and if he can live up to his word, if he can channel all that negative energy that he's been receiving um, and, and turn that into a positive on Sunday if he starts, then by all means, Callum, crack on. In regards to negative energy Ian I'm not I haven't seen fans be, be, be over critical of Wilson or anything like that I've, I've seen fans question the chances which he, he's fluffing and missing those opportunities to, to put us ahead in games I haven't seen anything too harsh have you? No um, I mean Twitter is a, a wonderful Cess place it, it is yes. like, <laughs> um, so he, it wouldn't surprise us if he has seen some um, I think it was if someone I'm sure it was his birthday or something the other week and they posted it and there was a few comments just about how out of form he is and stuff. So unless that's what he means by negative energy. But for me, it's it's not unjust. Uh, I like Callum Wilson. I think he is a really good striker. But given his, his performances, and it, it's not just for me, it's not just his lack of goals. It, um, it, it's his overall performance. I think a few people have touched on that, that it, it sort of looks half-hearted when he's sort of closing down or he's he's sort of not winning anything and he's, he's really really good at holding the ball up it's one of his strengths but he's not doing that well um so but like i say it's it's a case of if what daryl said if, if he can harness that what he's he's calling negative energy and, and turn it into a performance then then fair play but i think for me i probably and we'll go go into sort of maybe the start right now i don't think he would start for me yeah, so I have just recorded uh, my starting eleven prediction as well, but we'll, we'll go through you lads in a minute, and and I'll go through that those sort of issues. Ian, I mentioned the likes of, of Callum Wilson's overall game, not just obviously lack of goal, scoring goals and what Isaac is bringing to the table. Um, but yeah, you will see that on another video. Anybody that is watching or listening to this one, that'll be going out in the, in the next couple of days. Um, so, Daryl, um, if we look at the, the reverse fixture of this game. It kind of summed up Newcastle season where we do quite well in games, but we just can't score goals. And it, it took to the right, very almost the last kick of the game for Maxi to, to equalise. Now, I think if I remember right, both goals were absolutely fantastic. I think ne yeah. never scored a screamer. The Maxi just just went and absolutely ruined that and just looked like taking over at that point. Um, 
and I think he might have actually got goal of the season. I think not goal of the season, goal of the month. month. Yeah, he won goal of the month for it, yeah. (coughs) Uh, For that one. Are you hoping for more more on this one, Daryl? Are you hoping that we're going to take these opportunities and and at least get a couple of goals? Yeah, I think so. Um, You know, it's it's got to have the advantage of the home crowd behind them. You know, the momentum that we can generate to to spur the lads on um, is going to be a big factor on Sunday. Um, And, you know, we've, we've talked about it already. You know, we're in to the position now where we really need to be thinking about picking up some wins before we hit the international break. You know, it's Wolves this week and then Forest next week. And, you know, it, it's going to be important to get results that we need in those games of wins um, before we hit that break. Um, as we all know, that sort of momentum can really help or hinder your season. Um, if we went into the international break without another win, then that would be a massive cause for concern, not just for, for Eddie Howe and the lads, but for certainly for a lot of the fan base as well. And big topic has been how we manage our expectations. Um it's something that's been thrown around even by the club ownership as well. They, they know that one of the one of the problems that they'll have is is managing the expectation of fans. Um, and especially about such a good start yeah, this season as well, yeah. Daryl. Exactly. You know, when things go well, we're a tidal wave, and when things go bad, it's like a black hole, um, and it, everything just gets sucked into it. Um, so it, it's going to be really important on Sunday, and I think we can do that. I think we'll probably get a couple of goals, but we'll get onto that later. Yeah. Um, so, Ian, if we're looking at the likes of the, the lineup itself, obviously you, you mentioned there that that Callum Wilson for you get gets a place on the bench. Um, Joe Will, uh, sorry, Joe Wilton, who's he? Um, Joe Linton, <laughs> um, he is obviously picking up his two match suspension. Uh, this will be the first one of that. Um, who do you go with? Do you stick with with the likes of Bruno and Longstaff and bring Willick straight back into the fold? Um, I think that's probably the the most likely the only option. <laughs> that, oh yeah, the only option. Um, obviously, it depends on on Willick's fitness. So I think sort of he, he picked up the um, picked up sort of a, a strain against Bournemouth, and then he looked when he came on against Man U. I thought he looked very, very sluggish, very slow. But against uh, against Man City, when he came on, I thought the, the the changes that he made, him, Isaac, and I believe it was Max, Saint Maximum. Maxi. Yeah, I thought they looked very, very, very sharp. Um, so I think I think he will go for Bruno Longstaff and will across the middle. For me as well, I think I would I would probably start Saint Maximum. I'm not his, his biggest fan, but I think the the performances he's give. In the last handful of games, I think warrant warrant a start um, more so than Miggy. But then it's a case of do you would Gordon fit on the the right hand side or would would you switch Maxi over? So, but in terms of midfield three, I think at the minute, based on obviously who's available, I think it, it sort of picks itself. But it's it's not a, a bad midfield three to to have, to be honest. Yeah. A lot of questions, Daryl, in regards to that left back position as well. Uh, yeah. I think we mentioned a few times on recent podcasts that teams seem to be targeting that side of the field and and pinning everything on, on Dan Byrne and, and how slow he can be at times. Um, do you think it, it's a bit too soon for Matt Target to come straight back in there? Do you think Eddie Howe will stick and, and be loyal to Dan Byrne? Um, it, it's a it's a tough question, you know, Chris, because like. When I think about the starting eleven, I start to think about how many changes is reasonable before it starts yeah. to really upset the flow of the team. Um, and so we've already got one forced change. Yeah, straight yeah. Away. So we've got that forced change, and I think Fabian Shea comes straight back in as well. I agree. So there's your second one, and I don't think Eddie would want to go and make more than two. Um, so which means you'll probably end up seeing Wilson start uh, basically like last week, just with those two forced changes. Um, for me personally, I would probably look at it and try and implement at least another one change maybe two um i think burn is going to be susceptible on sunday because you've got um adama triori playing for wolves down that right hand side of theirs down our left um and he's going to cause dan burn a lot of problems with his pace because you all know how quick he is and if he gets his cell greased up like he does then you'll not be able to get a hold of him many times soon um so i think it might be time just to have a little bit more of an attacking threat down that side as well maybe time to see my target come in yeah yeah what about you Ian? what's your thoughts on that left hand side I think as much as I don't want to slag him off because I, I really do think Dan Burns a, a good footballer. Um, he, Agreed. To be honest, he, su- he surprised us of, of how how sort of comfortable and, and well rounded he is. For me, though, I think he is he is half playing at left back. I don't think he's a natural left back. We've showed with limitations and going forward, obviously, it does work well if we're being so heavy 
sort of heavy down the right hand side. He's able just to sit and make it a back three. But I feel that a lot of teams now are wise to that. Um, but I think obviously if you try and change it up and go on the left hand side, whoever's the winner is doesn't have a lot of support in terms of overlapping runs from Dan Byrne. If if he's up there, it's it's a case of we could get caught out at the back. Um, so for me, I I do think probably time to, to maybe put Matt Target back in. I thought last season when he um, obviously when he was on loan, I think he was one of our most sort of consistent players um, and and give really good quality performances. So it'll be interesting to see how we would approach a game with an actual left back at left back. Um, and then whoever whoever is going to sort of uh, have support in, on the left hand side, whether that be Gordon or, or St Maximum or, or Willock or whoever, uh, it'd be interesting to see how that goes. It is one of those games, Darrell, where you could ask any fan going in that ground, and the the likes of opinion would be completely different in regards to starting eleven. Because I, I bet you if we went through our starting eleven now, which we'll, we'll not bore everybody with, but th- there'll be changes and differences in, in our starting eleven. Because if we're being realistic, yeah. I've, I think there's probably only about five players that, that hold their position from, yeah. from the last game. Obviously, there's questions about left-back. The You've got your force change in Joel Linton missing. Do you bring Fabian back in? Or, or does, does Lesselles do enough against Manchester City? Personally, I think he did, but we know that Eddie Howe most likely probably will bring Fabian back in. You've got the debate on the left-hand side with Gordon and Maxi. You've got the debate yeah. on the right-hand side with Miggy and, and Gordon, if you bring Gordon back in. You've got obviously Callum Even Wilson Murphy and, as well. and Murphy yeah. as well. Like, does yeah. Murphy get a chance? Because he's doing well when he's came on. It's it, it's up in the air at the minute in regards to our strongest eleven because each player is offering something different. And when each player is getting a chance, I think most of them are, are, are really grasping that chance and doing well when they have that opportunity coming off the bench. Ian mentioned earlier the impact that Isaac, Maxi, and Willick had coming on against Manchester City. It's the most dangerous we looked right the way through that game. So. Does Eddie bring those three straight in from the from the off and, and take the game to Wolverhampton? I'm yeah. glad I'm not making these decisions because <laughs> somebody's not going to be happy at the end of it. Oh, I mean, me too. I'm glad it's not my headache to have, um, and I'm pretty sure we've said that before. Um, and you know, it's that like you say you could ask the entire attendance on Sunday what the starting level would be, and I think you might get 52,000 different variations of it. Not that it's possible, of course, through the laws of physics and maths, but <laughs> I think you'd probably get 52,000 different 11s. Um, for me, you know, the, the the lack of Joe Linton is probably going to be a, the biggest concern that I've got going into to Sunday because his physical presence in that midfield, his ability yeah. to win the ball back is going to be such a massive miss for us. Um, I've been sitting here today thinking whether or not you might even go for a change of system, but that's something that's probably a little bit too technical to, to be diving into to right now, because I, I, I'm wondering if he may bring in Willick, but keep him as part of a, a three behind Isaac, so that Isaac's got a bit of support, because Isaac, his strength isn't to hold the ball up, he's it's, he's not that kind of striker, he's the one that needs balls played in, through, behind, mm. over the top, etc, etc for him to run onto, um, and whether or not he would stick with a, a sitting two of Sean Longstaff and Bruno, but, you know, it's going to be such a, a difficult decision for Eddie to make. And I think you have to try and put your sensible hat on and think in, in the mind of Eddie that he won't make that many changes and only be the ones that he deems necessary that will be made. Yeah, I agree. Um, just just to mention the, the starting prediction, which I had done, I think when I started off, I thought of the, the predicted 11 as how Eddie Howe would approach it. Then when I got further up the field, I thought, no, this is how I want to do it. <laughs> so like the, the team's a bit mix-matched at this point yeah. because... Like I've said for weeks that I would love to see Maxi and Isaac and Willick get a decent run in the team together and just to see what they do. But that's what I want. I don't think it's what we're going to get at the yeah. weekend. Um, if we go through our predictions, okay. So, like we mentioned at the very start of this one, I think Newcastle. We don't necessarily need three points. It's not at that point. I don't think we'll ever get to that point anytime soon for this. But I think. With three defeats on the bounce, we need to turn that corner now. So, over to you, Ian. What's your predictions? This is a difficult one because, like you say, we literally always draw. It's always either 1-1 one, one or 2-2. Two, two. I think the last I think... five results, mate, it's been three draws, one defeat, one win. Um, it's a difficult one. If, if you look at Wolves' form... It, that's very, very up and down. The the beat Spurs recently. They got beat off Liverpool. They got beat off Bournemouth. But they beat Southampton. So they're they're very, very hit and miss. Um, yeah. Away from home, I think they've only scored nine goals and won two games and conceded a lot. 
So I'm hoping if I hope there is a little bit of a change, but I can't see that it to, to be. And I just hope we, we do find um, some chances that we can put away. So I'm going to go optimistic. I'm going to go 2-0. I think we'll be all right defensively. And I'm hoping that we'll, we'll show up and, and like they create some chances and, and actually score. So I'm going to go 2-0. Daryl? Uh, very similar. I'm going to go with a 2-1 simply because I can't get the, the possibility of Neves scoring a scream out of my head like he likes to do um, and I just think if they were going to do it that would probably be how they score a goal um, but I think we should have more than enough with the crowd behind them um, and with a good work a good week's work on the training pitch this week should have more than enough to pick up the three points Yeah I'm, I'm going for the same scoreline as Ian I think uh, 2-0 to Newcastle I think it's about time now that we put these opportunities to bed and actually score, actually score some goals because we're absolutely desperate at the minute to, to put the ball in the back of the net. It's getting to that point where as each game passes by and, and these opportunities just keep on going by with scuff shots, just missed opportunities, we're thinking, oh, we're ever going to score. I think this will be the one. So first game back at St. James's Park since that Carabao Cup final as well. So hopefully atmosphere will, will be fantastic. It's the, the later kickoff on the Sunday as well. So... People have had a few drinks going into that one too. So hopefully we'll sign off the weekend with three points. Anything that you two would like to add before we wrap this one up? Um, no. I think the only not concern, I don't I don't like using that because that's a negative, but I feel the way Eddie Howe looks at it is the options off the bench, like we're seeing against Man City, those options of Willick. Obviously, I think Willick will start because of it's a forced change, but uh, St. Maximum and Isaac, I feel he looks at them more of impact players at the minute and, and very, very good impact players. And there's some argument to be had. I feel if, say, if we were chasing a goal, if it was nil nil, we wanted a goal, I, I would be more comfortable with St. Maximum and Isaac coming off the bench against tired legs than I would, say, Gordon or Gordon Murphy whoever, and, and Carl Wilson coming off. So I think, I know we've deliberately, I've said that. I, I want you to start. I think you will. I, I genuinely think it'll probably be the, the same eleven as Man City minus those uh, enforced changes. The, the thing is, though, I think you've got to look at it in a, in a positive view, though. Ian, I think if we're taking the game to them, you should need impact subs. I, I think yeah. if, if those lads start and we take what opportunities, we've had plenty against every single opposition we've faced this season. So if we put the ball in the back of the net, you, you, there's no need for impact subs, none whatsoever. So. Hopefully we'll have the bed. Yeah, so we'll, the, we'll have the game done and dusted. We're, we'll we're, we need bed. to come out and start like we did against West Ham and get that nice early yeah. goal, get everybody settled down and get, and get the game flowing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, fingers crossed, lads. I think I think this will be a, a change in direction for us. I, I think it will be. I think this is where Newcastle will get back on course just and pick up where we did before the World Cup break. Uh, thanks, boys. Being a pleasure as Don't always. Uh, thanks, everybody, good. for watching and listening. If you do want to like the video, it means a lot to us. If you want to do that extra bit and become a subscriber, we're pushing 10,000. Not far from that. Now, if you want to give it extra bit back, it's just 2 a month to become a member. You get early access to videos you get access to the telegram group plus much more and we shall see you next time on the match reaction see you later bye everyone